This is Joseph Palmer at the Autodidact Channel, and this is a short documentary about why the skies are blue and sunsets are orange. During all our known oral and written history, humans have wondered at the origin of our sky's blue color. Mostly, we've gotten it wrong, though there have been some good ideas along the way. The ancient Greeks believed that Zeus painted the sky blue to remind mortals of the blue eyes of his daughter Athena. Some ancient Slavs believed that Svorog, their god of fire and blacksmithing, used a blue stone when creating the world, giving the sky its color. In modern times, some say the sky is blue because it reflects the color of the ocean. But anybody who's lived in the high deserts of the Great Basin will tell you of the amazing blue skies to be seen there hundreds of miles distant from the Pacific. Others say the blue is because of all the water stored up in the atmosphere, waiting to fall as rain. But again, consider the cobalt blue skies of the bone dry Atacama Desert. Some who are more scientifically inclined have hypothesized that it must be because of the oxygen in our atmosphere, because isn't liquid oxygen blue? However, those in the know will tell you oxygen in its gaseous state is colorless. Rainbows exhibit a blue light of a similar hue to the sky, and those are caused by light refracting through drops of rain hanging in the sky. Is light refraction through the atmosphere why it is blue? Sadly, no. Air's refraction index is far too low to produce any significant bending of sunlight. In this video, we will find out that the blue of our skies and the orange of our sunsets are caused by scattering of light propagating through our atmosphere. This animation shows a light bulb and a rectangle of reflective material. The bulb emits a beam of white light that travels to the surface of the rectangle. The angle at which the beam arrives relative to the surface is the angle of incidence, labeled with the Greek letter theta and subscript I. The dashed line indicates the normal vector of the surface incident to the light beam. Imagine a normal vector is an arrow pointing directly away from the surface immediately beneath it. The angle of incidence is measured relative to the normal vector. In a reflection, when the beam arrives at the reflective surface, it departs in the direction equal to the angle of incidence, but relative to the opposite side of the normal vector. Reflections are not the cause of our blue skies. If significant reflections were to happen, most sunlight would reflect back into deep space, leaving little arriving at the Earth's surface. Consequently, most life would die and our skies would be dark. This animation shows a light bulb in a rectangle of refractive material. The bulb emits a beam of white light that travels to the surface of the rectangle. The angle at which the beam arrives relative to the surface normal vector is the angle of incidence. Measured just as with light reflectance and labeled with the letter theta, but in this instance with subscript 1. In light refraction, when the beam arrives at the surface, it departs into it rather than away. However, if the material properties differ significantly from those through which the beam has been traveling, then its direction will be changed as it enters. The amount of change depends on the refractive index of the two materials. A high index tells us a material has strong light bending properties. Examples are glass and diamond. Note how the light travels through the refractive material at the new angle, but returns to its original angle upon exiting the rectangle. However, the apparent origin of the beam was shifted by the refraction. Refraction explains why it is tricky locating objects underwater while viewing them from above the water. Refractions are not the cause of our blue skies. Air has a low index of refraction, nearly equal to vacuum. 
If significant refractions were to happen, then the sun's movement across the sky during the day would be distorted. It would seem to accelerate in the mornings and evenings when the refractive effect is strong, is strong because arriving sunbeams have large angles of incidence. This animation shows a light bulb in a rectangle of scattering material. Once again, the bulb emits a beam of white light that travels to the surface. But in this case, the angle of incidence is unimportant. Light scattering materials do not by themselves bend light. As the beam of light travels through the material, some of its photons occasionally impact particles. And just like a tennis racket impacting a ball, the photon's direction of travel is changed. But in a random direction that depends on the shape, orientation, and velocity of the impacted particle. When the beam ex exits the material, it has lost some of its photons to scattering. Just as a leak in a garden hose will reduce water pressure, scattering materials reduce the luminosity of light beams traveling out of them. Furthermore, the scattered photons travel in many random directions, and consequently the material will appear to glow to an observer, even if one cannot see the beam itself. Scattering is the reason our skies are blue and sunsets orange. However, if scattering happened just as described in this animation, then the sky would only be a dim color of gray. To understand from where the colors come, we must look at the particles in our atmosphere that are causing scattering. Our atmosphere is composed of nitrogen and oxygen. Molecular nitrogen, or N2, and molecular oxygen, or O2, are nearly of identical size and mass. At 300 picometers, they are over a thousand times smaller than the wavelength of violet light, the shortest wavelength on the visible spectrum. Even so, sunlight must travel over 100 kilometers of atmospheric N2 and O2 to reach the surface, and during that transit, some photons will impact air molecules and rebound in other directions. Because of how light interacts with matter, longer wavelengths are less likely to impact an air molecule. A plot of the probability of scattering versus the wavelength shows that violets and blues are over four times more likely to be scattered compared to oranges and reds. This animation shows the sun in our atmosphere. The sun emits a light beam, and as it enters and travels through, it undergoes atmospheric scattering. However, most of the scattering is incurred by blue and violet colored photons and others of even shorter wavelengths, such as ultraviolet and x-rays. This color selective scattering has two consequences. First, most of the scattered photons are blue colored, and to a person on the ground it appears that the sky is glowing blue because photons are arriving in all directions from where they were scattered somewhere else on the globe. Second, the scattering has the effect of subtracting blue light from the white colored beam. From color theory, we know that subtracting blue from white gives yellow. This explains why at midday our skies are blue and the sunlight is yellow. This animation again shows the sun in our atmosphere. However, the angle of incidence to the atmosphere is much greater, as would be the case just after sunrise or before sunset. Because of the oblique angle, photons must travel much further to reach the ground than would be the case at midday. Whereas at midday only 100 kilometers. In the morning and evening, light must traverse over 2,000 kilometers, thus significantly increasing the chance of green photons being scattered, or even orange photons. Consequently, the sky glows yellow and orange when the sun is low on the horizon. Furthermore, from color theory, we know that when we subtract both blue and green light from white, we get red. Therefore, sunlight changes from the yellow of midday to the orange-red of early morning or late afternoon. Blue light scattering is not a phenomenon unique to our atmosphere. Indeed, there are many examples in our world where similar scattering effects and results can be observed. This is a beaker holding a sulfur-containing solution. When illuminated with a bright beam of light, it is scattered by the solution 
giving it a pleasant blue glow and leaving only orange light to illuminate objects in its shadow. Here we have an artistic glass vase whose blue light scattering and refracting shape produces interesting patterns of orange light at its base. These are a collection of antique glass objects. If the glass is left exposed to the sun for many years, it will eventually scatter violet and blue light. That is why these objects have a blue glow, a property highly sought after by some collectors. And here we have a piece of opalescent glass likely found on a beach. After many years exposed to the sun and eroding elements, it proves to be an interesting study of the three forms of light propagation discussed in this video. Light reflection causes glare and subtle images of surrounding objects on its upper surface. Light refraction causes that passing through to become focused towards its base, leaving most of its shadow without illumination. Finally, a color selective light scattering of blue light gives the glass a blue glow and leaves a delightfully delicate fairy-like orange figure to appear on the opposite side. Before concluding this video, I want to share with you the result of an experiment I did with a ray tracing simulation. Blender is a free and open source computer generated image tool that possesses a very capable ray tracing engine, widely recognized to be physically accurate to reality. In the right figure, you see my attempt at modeling the light propagating effects observed in the opalescent beach glass. Though not an exact match, I was nonetheless able to replicate reflection, refraction, and blue light scattering for a sunlike light source. Notice how the light has been bent and its color transformed to orange during its travel through this simulated glass object. This concludes our video. If you enjoyed it, then please express your gratitude by liking the video, sharing with friends and family, and subscribing to our channel. This is Joseph Palmer at The Autodidact. Keep learning.